What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to the Help More, Sell More podcast. Uh, I am joined by my co-host, Joe Marcoux. Joe, how are you today? Any better, there'd be two of me. It's a it's a scary proposition for my wife, but for, for you guys, feeling awesome. How about you, Jeff? What's going on, man? Uh, that would be absolutely terrifying. Uh, yes, I, I am. I am excited today as well. Uh, you guys, my name is Jeff Burlingame and I am uh, hosting this show with Joe. We are super excited to talk to you guys today about uh, something very nerdy. I think I, I think of this as nerdy. I nerd out on this all the time, and I think you guys should as well. And I, I believe Joe would back me up on this. But we're going to talk about sales metrics. Pull out the pocket protectors. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, where's your calculator? Get your TI-83 plus. We are going to do this thing the right way. But sales, sales is a numbers game. I don't know if you guys know this. Sales is very much a numbers game. And if you know your numbers, you can be extremely successful in selling. If you don't know your numbers, like unfortunately, most of the salespeople uh, I, I train or meet with, at least when they first start with me, you know, it, you, you don't really know what's going on. On with your system. You might not know if you're successful, unsuccessful, why you're successful or unsuccessful. So we're going to dive into all of that on today's episode. Really excited about it. And quick heads up to everybody listening to this. If I sound kind of like death, it's because I feel kind of like death. Uh, we're not feeling super great today, but you know what? I know what Joe would say, and it's on a sign right behind him. If you're watching on YouTube, there, highest energy wins. So I'm going to turn it up to an 11 from a one, uh, uh, which is what I started at today. But hey, we're juiced up on Dayquil. We got this thing going. Let's, Let's do it. Uh, so we're going to make this thing happen, you guys. Hey, if you like the episode, of course, be sure to subscribe. Uh, we will have a YouTube channel. By the time you hear this episode, there's probably a YouTube channel going. So go check that out. Help more, sell more on YouTube. Uh, you can follow us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Please consider dropping us a, a like on any of those videos and a five-star review anywhere you hear those podcasts. That really helps us grow the show and bring you more amazing content, hopefully help you make more money, help you sell more, help you help more people. That's the whole idea here. So you guys doing that is a huge favor to us. And we really appreciate you doing it as well as sharing the show with anybody who needs help with sales. And mind you, everybody sells. We talk about this just about every episode, I think, Joe, right? Everybody sells. And our goal is to be able to provide so much incredible value from just listening to this free information that we're providing you, that you'll be able to take it to the bank. And there's something that you know we both believe in, Jeff, and that's win-win, right? Jeff's exactly. got a sales training program. I've got a sales training program. And to be able to turn around and say, oh, no, 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 there's no other program around. That's not what we're <laughs> saying. What we're saying is, hey, there's a lot of value that Jeff gets to bring to the table and you should take a look at that. And there's other people that aren't on this program with us right now. And there's other great trainers out there. We're here to be able to provide you, the listener or the viewer on YouTube, great value so that you can take immediate action, have a lot of fun and make an impact on people. And this is why we want to help more so that you can sell more. That's exactly it. And as you mentioned, there are other great minds out there when it comes to selling and we plan on having them on the show. So you guys Absolutely. rest assured, we're going to have some amazing guests here in the future. So again, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. Uh, we also have a free Facebook group. If you guys want to join that, just look up help more, sell more on Facebook. It is private. So you will have to just input some information. Uh, very simple questions. Don't worry. We didn't make it too complicated. We just want to make sure you're a real person, not a robot. Uh, but we'll be dropping lots of golden nugget nuggets weekly in there as well. So join up and Let's roll. All right, guys. So we're talking about sales being a numbers game. This is all about sales, uh, sales metrics. And, you know, at this point, five episodes in, we like to start the show out with what we call story time. So, Joe, can you share a story from a time when knowing your metrics, really knowing those numbers helped you achieve a sales goal? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, one of the things about measuring your metrics, guys, it goes all the way back for me, it goes back to Peter Drucker, things that I've learned from this legend uh, from the days of General Motors. And he learned very quickly, hey, if we can measure it, we can grow it. What gets measured can grow. And so it doesn't have to be convoluted and you don't have to be using these incredible 
algorithms and anything else. We're talking basics here. So for those watching on YouTube, you're looking at me using this very incredible piece of equipment here. It's so, it, it is absolutely okay. complicated. It's a clicker. I'm just counting the number of people that I'm speaking to. So if you're in retail, you've got brick and mortar. And one of the things that, that I've done, so in, in this story, I've done both in my own career and the career of, and, and in helping a lot of my clients that are in brick and mortar, just have everybody who's on, on the team, like it's five bucks, put a clicker in your pocket and count the number of bodies coming into the, into the business. And I'll use an example of the, of the electric bicycle industry, right? Because some people would say, well, yeah, I can get a counter on the door. And in, in some cases that makes sense. However, you can get convoluted numbers because if you're going outside to do test rides, then your, your, your numbers of in and out, in and out really don't make sense. So you, you, Again, simply measure the number of bodies. So one of the questions that I would have, and I, it's, it's one of my sales questions, and let's just make it easy, right? Out of 100 people, so from zero to 100, out of 100 people that you've, you speak to or that come into your location or you actually have a phone call with, so out of 100, how many people, and this is a dollar sign, how many people purchase on the first visit? And this is what's interesting. I get, I get, because I'm listening, right? We have two ears and one mouth, and this is what I hear, Jeff. What do you think, guys? Yeah, it's probably, it's around uh, 20. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I'm thinking it's, I think it's around 15. So probably around, I think, what do you uh, think, maybe. guys? So the answer is you don't know, right? So again, <laughs> simple number, out of 100, every 100 people that you speak to, whether you're in a live environment in a brick and mortar, you're on Zoom, you're a coach, you work from your home. I, I mean, I've got coaches that are in the program that are that they they literally they drive in a van and they live a wonderful lifestyle. Um, out of, I still ask the question out of 100 people, how many people purchase on the first visit? And if you're not measuring the number of people, you've got a problem right then and there. Here's the example. So in some businesses, I get the once we start measuring the metric, we'll just say the number is 20 out of 100. Okay. 20 out of 100. Here's what's interesting. That means that 80 are walking. That's a powerful number in and of itself. 20 yeah. out of 100 are buying. <laughs> 80 out of 100 are not. And we know that your fortune's in your follow-up. So like, that's a whole other episode. Then the yeah. next question I ask, especially in the bike industry, is I go, okay, so out of those 100 people, out of 100 people, how many people... Bob, B-O-B. -B. And people go, well, what's Bob? And I, that stands for butts on bikes. How many people do you actually get to get on a test ride so that they can experience the product that you're offering? Because we know some salespeople, they vomit, they barf all over their customers, <laughs> which is really their prospects because a customer isn't a customer until they pay. So they're barfing all over them and they're showing the bike and they're not allowing their prospect to actually get on it and experience it. And so the Bob number, right? In this case, if you can actually get someone to experience what you have to offer. And mm -hmm. like in my case, you, I get, I talk to people and then I get them to come in for a complimentary dojo session. That would be an example of another, you know, Bob number. So yep. let's assume that out of these same 100, I, let's say the number is 50. Well, here's the interesting thing. Even if you suck at sales and we don't want you to suck, we want to give you some valuable information here. Let's, mm -hmm. just, let's just work the number. If I can influence this 50 to go to 60 out of 100 or 70 out of 100 or even 80 out of 100, and by the way, the techniques that I show, it's not perfect. I get people to that 90 percentile. We move the 20 up here from 20, uh, the first visit, right? Out of 100 people, 20 people are buying on the first visit. Well, if you increase your demo where they experience it themselves, this 20 turns to 30 or 40 or even 50. If you walk away from anything out of this episode at all, it's know your sales process correctly so that you can influence those numbers. The numbers don't lie. Women lie, men lie, numbers don't lie. And this is all about shucking oysters. So what are we looking for? We're looking for pearls. You just keep moving on. And what you get really good at with your numbers, by the way, is you get to really focus in on who's my customer. Because those people that do buy, then I really want to focus on the definition of that customer avatar. 
so that I can market to them effectively. And Jeff, you're masterful with your Facebook ads, for example. You know how to be able to pick those people apart. You won't know if you're not measuring your metrics. So that's a true story. Every bike industry person that I, I, I deal with, we, we like that's part of my sales process. And then we okay. implement very simple, you know, just use a clicker and then mark down how they heard about you so that you can measure those metrics as well. Like that's another story altogether in terms of your marketing metrics. How much money are you spending on ads? What's working? What's not? Success leaves clues, you guys. And you can literally put it in a process, literally a blueprint. So how about you, Jeff? Tell, tell, give, me, give us a story that, that would help people understand that the importance of measuring your metrics in sales. Yeah, I, I, I think everything you mentioned there is great, man. I think what's great about uh, us doing the show together is that you can bring a lot to the table from like the retail side coming from that bike industry. And I've got a lot from the service industry side. So I'll share with you guys at this point, in the, in the show, you should know that I worked in gyms for a long time, big fitness guy. Uh, and you know, an example would be when I was working as a subcontracting personal trainer or fitness director, right at a gym, uh, which I've mentioned before on the show, but what it comes down to is, you know, working within a, a gym where people are already joining the gym, they have the gym membership, they sign up and they're like, yep, I'm here. I'm done. Got my key card. I'm an official gym member and now I'm fit. Boom, poof, magic wand, right? Uh, we used to try to use the magic wand close too, which is always fun. That's a Zig Ziglar throwback. But yeah. uh, at the end of the day, yeah, they, they join the gym and then it's my job to then do a cold call in person. I'd walk up to them, approach them on a treadmill. I had a magic trick where I'd say, hey, and I'd like mimic, if you're watching me on YouTube, I'd mimic taking my earbud out because everybody has their earbuds on, on the cardio deck, right? They're Love on it. their ellipticals, their bikes, their treadmill. And I'd be like, hi. And they mirror me and they take their earbud out. And then I introduce myself and I offer them what we call the PTX or personal training experience, which is your Bob situation right? Ah. That's on bikes. We give them a little bit of a workout, a little taster. And, and honestly, like a lot of what uh, we now call it, in another company I work at, No Sweat Intro, um, a lot of what this No Sweat Intro PTX, this experience really was about was visualization. So the butt on the bike in that scenario was actually diving into the human psyche and getting this person to picture what I call a positive future self. So what I was actually selling was not squats and push-ups. Right. It's not uh, bench press. It's not a deadlift. It's who is this person going to be if they follow our program? Because Love they it. don't care how the program works. They right, just Joe, want it like, to work. Exactly. Nobody's coming up to you and be like, uh, can you explain exactly how this mechanism works on this electric bike? No. How fast does it go? That sounds like fun. Yeah. Like, and then try it out. Right. And, and with us, it was like, who cares what program you're following? I don't care about the points of performance of a squat. I could tell you them, but they don't care. I don't care about my diet, like how I'm supposed to eat. Just tell me like, to restrict my calories. Tell me how many meals a day to eat. Tell me how much water to drink in a day. And then if I do that, I'll get results. What results will I get? That's what I'm selling is if they can picture themselves at 30 pounds less, 40 pounds less, 10% less body fat, like, and they start really visualizing that. That's where that we talked about false urgency last time, right? Last episode, episode four, if you guys remember, um, this creates a, a, it's not false. It's a real urgency of how bad do I want that, that, that desire that we started getting to towards the end of the episode, you know, it creates that desire for them. So imagine the power exactly. word, imagine. Exactly. And that's where like the magic wand clothes yeah. came in. Like if yeah. I had a magic wand, I waved it over you and you were 20 pounds less. Like, how would you feel? Right. So we're getting to all of that. Now, how does this play into numbers? Well, I knew that uh, there, there were four very important numbers to me, just four. And there's a million numbers that go into sales. So I'm just going to really narrow the scope here for you guys. Leads, set, show, close. Those were my magic four numbers to know. Leads, how many people I interacted with set how many people booked an appointment with me, the PTX, the no sweat intro, right? That yeah, butts on it. bike experience show how many of those set appointments actually showed up for their schedule appointment and then close 
how many people signed up when they showed up to that scheduled appointment, right? And knowing these numbers, I could predict, project within, you know, a, a minuscule percentile, like three to 5%, I could predict how I was going to finish the month as far as revenue. Like, that's how good I knew those numbers. And I'll give you them now. It was 10, 6, 4, 2. Like, I knew that if I talked to 10 people, six of them would book an appointment, four of them would show up, two of those four would sign up. Like, it's the numbers that's, game. That's exactly it. So if I yep. knew 10, 6, 4, 2, then again, within that three to five percentile error, I could predict how I could finish the month. I could look at my month day in and day out and say like, all right, how many people did I talk to today? Five. And how many appointments did I book out of that? Three. If I talk to five more people, I'll probably get three more appointments. Then four will show up. Then I'll close two. And if I close two, there's a, another, uh, we'll throw a fifth number at you here average revenue per sale. If I knew my average revenue per sale was 500 bucks and I needed to make a thousand dollars, then I need to make two sales. If I need to make two sales, we're going to work backwards here. If I need to make two sales, I need four appointments to show up. If I need four appointments to show up, I need to have six appointments set. If I need six appointments set, I need to talk to 10 people. Do you see how this works? I, like I'm going to literally be watching this podcast myself. I'm going to, I'm taking notes guys. Like this is huge. And it's interesting, Jeff, because going back to some of the things that I've learned in my career just recently, mm -hmm. um, it, in terms of, you know, how many, it, we, if we ask everybody who's listening or watching, how many of you actually have an Instagram account or a Facebook account or a TikTok account, right? The, the likelihood is it, based on one of those three, you probably have one or a LinkedIn yeah. account. Well, Almost guaranteed. Go, so go, let's use Instagram as the example. If you're focused on doing social media posts on Instagram to be able to nurture clients, to be able to get them into your place of business, whether you're a coach or a brick and mortar retailer or anything else in between, mm -hmm. do the numbers that Jeff just talked about. Like this whole idea of lead, set, show, close. I love it. So how many followers do you have? How many new followers have you added from that? How many conversations did you open from that? From conversations open, how many appointments from the DM could you have booked for a, a complimentary call or a complimentary visit? How many people actually showed up from people that you actually showed up? How many people did you actually close? I mean, it, it's it's a numbers game. You got to add a ton more followers to be able to dilute that down to the people that you DM to dilute that to the people that actually booked in a, you know, I mean, you booked a call. How many people showed up on the call? How many people actually bought from you? Yeah. It's numbers, you guys. And let me, let me give you guys uh, one more very important thing here. Numbers don't have any emotion. And the reason that that is valuable <laughs> is so that the, re the reason that's valuable is that if you look at 10642, for example, for me, that means that of the 10 people I spoke to, four people told me to screw off. They said yeah. like, they put their earbud back in and they said, nah, man, I'm cool. I don't want to do this PTX, this personal training experience. And that was fine with me. That took the emotion out of it. Now, if I hadn't known that numbers didn't have emotion, if I didn't know my numbers, then this is a, a one equals one scenario where it's like, I go to talk to a person and they tell me no, and that just hurts. It hurts deep down in my soul. They, they don't care enough about me that they want to do this appointment. You know, they think, I don't know anything. They're ignoring me. They maybe said something rude and I'm going to take that in an emotional way. And it's going to be tough for me to stay motivated the rest of the day. How am I going to take that, get my motivation back up, go to the next treadmill right next to this person, do my earbud trick again, and try and get this person to talk to me and then book an appointment. Well, if I know numbers are not emotional, then I just look at them as a one, just a tally mark, yeah. just, just a tally mark. Like, and I'm not saying you know, people aren't worth anything. People are just numbers. That's not the idea here. The idea is if you don't think that way in the scenario of trying to book appointments, when you get hung up on, it stings oh, and it yeah. sits with you and you resonate on it. And then you don't pick up the phone and dial the next number, right? You need to do that. And so that's you just the... have to keep in mind, the numbers will always play out. That's why sales is numbers game. They'll play out for you take it in stride and move to the next opportunity. This is where it's really interesting, Jeff, because there's a, there's a fine line between that. We have to be able to look at the black and white in terms of the data, mm -hmm. right? The data doesn't lie. 
Uh, I've recently learned the phrase, all data, no drama. So leave the drama out of it. It's just yeah. data. Now, the thing is, is that we're human beings and we need to re relate. We want you to help more people so that you can sell more and have a better quality of life. It, it, it's, it's, it's great. So the question then becomes, what happens when you have a sales slump? Because your numbers will be able to reflect if things are going off. And as yeah. emotional creatures, if we're off, that's where good coaching comes in so that you can reset your mindset. Yep. And so look at the numbers. We're not suggesting that you, you go around. And I like the, the way that you're approaching this. If you look at the numbers, it's just numbers. If you see that there's a dip in the numbers, then either you have to work harder to be mm -hmm. able to make up that difference, or you reset what your sales approach is. So we're, we could give you the step-by-step -step blueprint, you still have to practice how you influence, what you do for persuasion. And that's going to influence the numbers game. Exactly. That's the fine line. Yeah, it, it really is. It's a situation where like in a vacuum, every week you would see 10, 6, 4, 2. Like I would talk to 10 people, six would book, four would show, two would close. But in reality, it's more of a running average. So to your point, you're going to have slumps. Sales is a period of peaks and valleys. It's a roller coaster ride. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You need to be able to take those losses, uh, you know, with grace and, and yeah. move on to the next appointment because you can't help more and sell more if you miss one appointment and just fall apart as a salesperson. You're like, yeah. I suck. I'm terrible. I'll never. I can't close a door. You know, like those types of salespeople that have dealt with in, in the past, they need to stop worrying about, you know, the next sale and just go back to the basics. Like just, yep. just go role play, which is like what we do in the dojo, right? Like yep. we hop in there, we spar, we role play, we have fun with it. We realize things. I mean, I can't tell you guys how many times during those role play sessions we've either myself has said, or Joe has said, or somebody else in the group has said like, man, I wish I had this yesterday. Right? <laughs> that just happened recently. It exactly. just happened happened yesterday i think it was amber right yeah, like yeah so so amber says man i this happened two hours ago i missed this appointment i wish i had this but guess what now she does yeah now it's in the tool belt and she goes back she experiences that again she goes i got this like i know what to do now and then she does it it, it, it like reinvigorates you when you role play and you you try something new or you hear something new and then you can go and apply that it brings that motivation right back so again like the the reason i say numbers are non-emotional is like i want you guys to think that way i want you to think yeah i missed a sale but it's it's a one on the tally mark right that's, that's one tally yeah i got more i got more and the, and the average will play out and you know that if you're in a slump that to Joe's point here is like, that's the time to try harder, like read a new book, listen to some podcasts. Like, I don't know, help more, sell more podcasts and drop them a five-star review. I'm just saying, you know, 100%. Casual, but uh, go, go, Get do, go talk to your peers, go role play, like surround, surround yourself with the conditions that you, and the people that you want to produce. So this is so important, you guys, because the data, these numbers that we're measuring gives us an opportunity to be able to look at Okay, what is it that I'm doing? And in, in terms of what Jeff talked about, is it is the problem in my leads? Am I getting enough leads? Is the problem in my set? Am I getting enough there? And how many appointments am I getting? How many people actually show up? Is the problem in my closing ratio? So now when you have those that that data, you get to work with it. So it, for example, like and a lot of people they blame they, yeah. it, too many people blame on the outside when you the numbers are completely emotion leather. So it's, school just started, uh, you know, like people are moving. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people when I say like, all right, why is our show percentage so low? And they go, I don't know. It, it's fall. Like, so today, oh yeah, as the recording of this episode is September 24th. It's like the second or third day of fall. Right. And, and this is the time where people go, Oh, weather's changing. People aren't going to show up for appointments. Like yeah. that's not why. Sorry. Yeah. The, 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 the classic, you know, it's like from the movie, Glenn, Gary, Glenn Ross, you know, the leads are weak. No, the leads aren't weak. Right. Or, yeah. or it's like, it's like, we're just not getting any traffic. Okay. Well yeah. you can create traffic. You can create yeah. traffic. I can understand that there's a seasonality to a lot of businesses. Yeah. That's not the point. We can create traffic based on what we understand. Again, mm -hmm. understanding the metrics. 
So that means all of the, we know that we could create ads and or promotions. And yep. it's so, so look Do at something. the numbers, look at the yeah. numbers. Like I've, I've had people onto, onto, onto some program. I have a thing that's called lead cycles, which is an automated service specifically for the, for the, for the electric bicycle industry for follow-up. And, and we're expanding into other industries. The point is, is that we've had people in a short period of time say, yeah, I'm not sure if this is really working. We dig into the numbers and we go, well, Hey man, um, you haven't filled out one test ride waiver. So if there's no test ride waivers, then there's no follow-up for people that have attempted and or done a bomb. Yeah. So it's like, if you, you can have the tools, if you're not measuring the metrics, you don't know that it's not working. So suddenly we start doing some work and it's like, you know, if you just created this habit and applied that habit, let's, let's do it for 30 days. And then we can actually measure, we can find out where the problem is. And it, it, you yeah. know, we, we do this with our clients and all of a sudden it's like, Oh, it's not that it's the fact that you're actually not <laughs> applying it and just using a waiver. And it, it's no yeah. different than in your business. I, it doesn't matter whether you're a retailer, whether you're a coach, whether you're in the uh, gym industry, measure those metrics. And then you a quick 30,000 foot view deep, like you don't have to go deep dive. You can look at it like it's, you've got four stats, right? Lead set, show, close. Awesome. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's exactly it. So what we've called this at Burley sales, uh, when we're training and developing sales individuals and sales teams is diagnosing the sales process, right? So your sales process is the process by which you guys follow within your business, creating a, a, a customer, right? How do you take somebody from a non-existent lead in your system to becoming a lead, to becoming a prospect and like coming in and actually doing a sales appointment with you to becoming a, a customer? What does that look like? And in order to diagnose that, if I, if I do a call with you, if you do a free discovery call with Burley sales, what I need to know is those numbers. And I can't tell you how often, uh, I don't get any real metrics from a person on calls. It's pretty much all the time. I'll say like, all right, you know, the, what's the obvious one closing percentage. How's sure. your closing percentage? Well, if they get in front of me, I sign them up. I'm like, that's not a number not and a that doesn't percentage. help me at all. Yeah. So it's like one person a month shows up and you sign them up. Great. That's terrible. Uh, so we need, to, <laughs> we need to figure that out, right? Like I yeah. need these numbers for me to literally be able to look at your business and diagnose the problem if there is one, right? Like if it's zero leads, well, your problem's leads. And that's right at the top of that, right? The first yeah. number, you yeah. have no leads. Here's your problem. You need leads. Let's say you have a hundred leads. And this is my favorite thing because marketing is just such a hot topic right now. And there's a million marketing gurus and I'll get you 50 new paying clients this month. Right. And all these promises, mm -hmm. but I mean, be honest with yourself right now. If I gave you a hundred leads and you had the current sales process that you have, what would you do with them? How would that go for you? If I put a hundred leads into your sales funnel, would your business break? It's a great would you question. Be okay? Yeah. Because that's the question you should be asking. Not it, it, it quit chasing just leads, leads, leads. Like if you can't get them to book an appointment, if you can't get them to show up for that appointment, if you can't sign them up, if you can't even accommodate, let alone accommodate them with either products, let's say you're low on stock, you can't even sell them anything. Yeah, you're screwed. Or service. You can't even provide a quality service. You're going to get one star reviews. You're going to get people quitting. You're going to get chargebacks. You're going to lose money. So, having more leads, typically not the answer. Having a better sales process and understanding that most people you encounter within your business are qualified, are good quality leads. Quit, you know, like to Joe's point, quit saying that the leads are weak, like do better with your sales process and you'll be fine. Uh, start focusing on those things. That's what it really comes down to. When we diagnose that funnel, I can look at those numbers, draw percentages, mind you. And I know in my head, like what a good percentage should be in your industry industry, uh, which I will, when I have that conversation, then I can go after that. I can say like your set percentage is 10% out of those hundred leads. You booked 10 for an appointment. The problem is how you book your appointments. Yeah. And then we can fix that. And then let's say your show percentage sucks next. 
Well, then we'll fix that. And then your closing percentage, great. Let's do some objection handling role play. Right. Let's and then go even beyond the that, Jeff. Even beyond yeah. that, after that, then it's what are we doing to, to be able to get repeat business from our existing database? Because yeah. the goal is, you know, we, we want to be able to have a long-term relationship. Every business at one level or another is a recurring revenue business. Yeah. You sell a car, it's not about making another car sale. It's about making sure that you have that person coming back in for regular maintenance. Yep. Right. And there's a difference between maintenance and service. Service is when something breaks. Maintenance yep. is to make sure that nothing breaks. Yep. Right. And so the, I, I do this example in the bicycle industry. There's there's some a brand that, that I, I work very closely with called Pedigo Electric Bikes. They have a five-year warranty. So what we do is, okay, it's one thing that you've sold them a bike. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get these people to come back in for regular maintenance over the course of their five-year warranty. Warranty mm -hmm. is not, labor is not covered. So the dealer has a golden opportunity to be able to do maintenance, which takes away from service. And maintenance is something that people pay for because they want their product, or in this case, their bicycle to perform well. If you're in the gym business, you know very well, okay, we get somebody on in, in, into the membership, but then there's also all these other services that you can provide. Think of nutritional products that suddenly it's like, yeah, you're going to get a meal replacement or a protein powder or a multivitamin. Yep. And that becomes a recurring revenue stream from somebody who you got to repeat doing business with. And how do you know that? Because you're measuring your metrics. <laughs> I'm blown. That's exactly it, you guys. So yeah, we're, we're going to talk repeat business on a future episode for sure, because that, I mean, if you think about it, the, the help more, sell more mentality, the way that we train at, uh, you know, the, within army of one, the sales dojo within Burley sales is about creating a, and fostering a strong relationship built on trust. People buy from those that they like, know, and trust. And if you can foster that relationship, you're going to get repeat business. Maybe not even just them, their family members, their friends, their coworkers, uh, they'll be coming back year over year. Eventually, like if you stay in business long enough, their kids come in. Like we hear this all the time. Uh, I'll see it with like real estate friends and lawyers and things like that. Like getting this long-term family business thing going on. With and that's a metric. And, that and that's a metric, metric. Jeff. That's How a many referrals did I ask for this week? Yeah. Be that's a metric. The, if you measure yeah. those, then you get to know, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, in I'm improving my business. How many yeah. testimonials did I get? I mean, these are all things that you, you can measure as opposed to, oh, I never get testimonials. Well, when was the last time you asked for one? Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, like, you, you know, that's make it part of your system. Yep, exactly. There's a lot of easy things you guys can do there. We'll, we'll, again, we'll bring that back in a future episode. That's what we're all about here. I mean, if you help more and uh, consequently sell more, then you will get repeat business. If you are, you know, of the persuasion of persuading, then uh, you're going to be basically tricking people into sales that in, in buying things that they not didn't cool. necessarily feel they needed or wanted. And you're not going to get repeat business. That's the difference between the family that continues to buy cars from the same car dealership and car dealer uh, or car salesman versus the car salesman that rips somebody off and never sees them again. Yeah. Right. Yes. Let alone gets the car returned or something or gets sued or gets the one star review. Like, let's not be doing that. And that is the message of this show. So continue listening. You guys, if you like the episode, of course, be sure to subscribe, drop a five star review for us anywhere you listen to your podcast and then subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is up by now so that you can see the video version of this and see our our. Beautiful faces. Smiling we, faces. <laughs> Happy people. Smiling. Pretty much the whole time. We get excited about this stuff, you guys. It's a blast. And we'll probably be dropping more content there as well as our free Facebook group, Help More, Sell More. So be sure to join. It's our goal to help you help more people and therefore live a better life yourself because you'll be selling more. Again, I've been Jeff Burlingame. My co-host here, Joe Marcou. We're happy to talk to you guys again, and we will be back next week with another awesome episode. Thank you so much for listening, you guys. Take care, guys.